need to walk out because I got a siren comes on mine. Well, I'm here tonight because the grace of God. I've been through a lot in my life, but most of all, 24 years, well, I'll be 25 years coming up in August. 24 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, totally. Because 24 years ago, I tried to commit suicide. I almost succeed, but God said, not yet. Uh, he brought me through a lot. And during that period of time, my ex-wife got the divorce from me. And I thought, well, I'm a failure. I, I even failed God, I felt. And that's how Satan was put in my mind. So I took these drugs that would kill me. It almost did. But the doctors was amazed when I come out of, from the Sharon Hospital uh, up there in the psych ward where they put me, because I was crazy. Yeah. And, but when my daughter come up to see me, they wouldn't let her come in. But she told me later on, she says, Daddy, there's something about you I don't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said, she said, while well, I was talking to you, there was a, a glow behind me. Okay, that was the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The doctors could not understand how I survived because the stuff I took either should have done brain damage or stomach damage or kidney damage. It didn't do nothing. It didn't do nothing. So my ex-wife got the divorce, and I sat there one day, and I said, Lord, you revealed a lot of things to me while I was in the psych ward. I said, my life belongs to you. But I said, I would like to have a companion. I said, Lord, give me a beautiful woman. <laughs> well, my kids said, well, Dad, you should hate, hate Mom because she cheated on you. I said, no. Because I had the Holy Spirit, I could not, I could not carry no grudge because of the presence of God in me. So anyhow, as time went on, I was told to go to uh, the Methodist Church beside the post office in Greenville. And uh, so I went for curiosity because it was a single club. Went there and seen what I could find. Or there was nothing there. I, said, I wasn't going to lose anything because I knew God was with me. And during that period of time, my beautiful wife, Kathy, was there. And God said, there's your wife. <laughs> what? That's your wife. <laughs> so after the, that day, it was just like, I reached my arms all the way around everybody and it was holding on to her hand. Oh, well, it really wasn't, but it just the seemed the way God revealed it to me. We were sitting at the Greenville Diner at that time, and I'm sitting there looking. I said, God, is that really my going to be my wife? She said, yeah, that's going to be your wife. Well, eventually she did become my wife. But in, in the period of that time, Kathy and I got married, and God blessed me through a lot of things. And back in October the 30th of 2015, I had an open heart surgery because the valve I had was going bad. I mean, it was going bad fast. So if you hear me going around, oink, 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 because I got a pig valve in me. Now they got moo, moo in them now. So, but anyhow, after that surgery, I woke up in intensive care, and I looked at my hands and looked at my arms. What did they put on me? It looked like oil, okay? I said, asked the nurse, I said, can somebody shave me and clean me up a little bit? She says, yeah. So they come in and clean me up and got me all cleaned up. I sat in there and I said, am I able to walk from there to there? And she says, are you sure you want to get up and walk? I says, yeah. So I got up and walked after they cleaned me up and went down the hall and she was behind me with this little chair for me to sit down on. Never sat down. I went up, turned around, come back, and went to back of the bed. While I was there, I looked again. There that oil is on me again. Curiosity, I go, hmm, there's my stitches. Well, there's little beads of oil on top of my stitches. 
the presence of the God, the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God. And so I asked again, can I go for another walk? And she says, I'm not sure, Mr. Paul. I said, I can do it. So they let me go ahead and do it again. So they put me up on the, what floor was it? I forgot. But anyhow, I got up there and I walked around and walked around. And it was Saturday came. I told Kathy she didn't have to come down, only if she wants to. Sunday came around. She came down and visited with me about what, half a day or so. That evening, now here comes the blessing. That evening, I, she left and I said, watching TV, ah, the heck with the TV. I was watching the jets come in out of the Pittsburgh airport. There are little, little planes, going, I could see them coming in and going out. And uh, that evening I started feeling funny around 12 o'clock or so. And I said, oh, oh well. Closed my eyes. Next thing I heard him yelling at me, Mr. Palm, Mr. Palm, come on, get breathing again. Come on, Mr. Palm. And I heard him say, call his wife, we're losing him. All right. There I was going back down to ICU, intensive care. And I'm sitting there, well, why am I in the grave? Because I could see dirt over here, dirt over here, and dirt here. But I'm looking up over. In the meantime, I couldn't understand why I was in the grave. And all at once, everything went black. And know what, what it was? Death is coming towards me. Then, out of nowhere, just the arms of the cross. On this arm was the prayer show. On this arm was the blood of Jesus Christ. Now I'm laying in bed, in, in the grave. And all at once these arms, just like a, the railroad signal was going back and forth. And as soon as this arm come out again, I said, Jesus. I cried out, Jesus. Then all at once a beam of light came down. I said, oh, I'm going to go to heaven. But no. Christ himself came down from his waist up. I could see him. Now, if you folks ever seen that movie, Is Heaven Real? Yes. And that girl drew that picture of Christ? Yes. That is what Jesus really looked like. Because he appeared to me personally in his glory. I mean, it was so glory. Not even a snow out in a, out in a desert with a snow there and nothing touched it could not match his glory. He had his crown, his robe, and so forth. But all was in such glory. I said, OK. Then I woke up. And the nurse came in that morning, Monday morning. And she said, well, Mr. Palm, we normally don't do this. But your stitches are coming out. And then she just touched them, and they just crumbled. That was the anointing of the oil that Christ put on my body. I don't have no much of a scar, but I do have oint oint in me. <laughs> so he, they come back in there later on that afternoon. He says, well, Mr. Palm, do you want to go home? I said, you're the doctor, but hear what Christ done. He gave me a Christian doctor. And he said, well, we're sending you home. So they contacted my wife, told her to come down and get me, if she wanted me. <laughs> but anyhow, he said, as, as he left the room, he turned around and he says, Mr. Palm, go for it. And I kept saying, what does he mean by that, go for it? I didn't understand at the time, but I'm supposed to use that part of my testimony to prove when I'm giving my ministry work. Then as time went on, I ended up having a, another emergency. Well, I had two close calls with head-on collisions, but God spared me through that. Then I had an experience where I had a 2013 Ford Explorer, 
It was a nice car. But the front wheel on the passenger side broke loose, went underneath the car. Now that could have flipped me and killed me. But it bounced me around pretty good. But Satan didn't have his way. And, uh, but anyhow, shortly after that, I had stomach ga gastro bypass. And what happened, 50 years ago, I had what they call a tummy tuck at that time, because I was gaining so much weight. And they put a, 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 a uh, what do you call that? Sample. No, it's just like a, they put a Band-Aid around it, that sulfical tube, because I had ulcers and so forth from the, the food stacking up inside wouldn't go through the stomach right. And uh, so they done what they call emergency gastro bypass. I only have a stomach size of an egg, they tell me. But anyhow, God brought me through that because they didn't expect me to make it because every, when they were doing stitches, they had a double stitch because my skin was so thin from not eating. And uh, as I, they were taking me back up to my intensive care, I guess I was praising the Lord in, in, in the prayer language. And the nurse thought I was swearing at her. And my wife says, wait a minute. She says, no, he's talking to his heavenly father in the prayer language. So God brought me from that close to death there. And uh, as time went on, I give God all the glory. To this day, I still give God the glory Amen. because I have a pacemaker put in. My heart wasn't beating just right. So he got, took me through that surgery. And then I end up in having another surgery on top of another surgery and another surgery. But the most important thing of all, I learned to walk in faith because I trust my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And during this period of time, I grew closer, but I stayed humble. I listened to what God showed me. I seen things, I seen visions that it was awesome. I seen uh, one day I was out working for the township and I seen a beautiful castle come down from heaven down to the earth, all in gold. I've seen different things, but yet God spared me for two things, to spread his word and show the people that he does miracles. The prayers that was brought up on this last surgery I had was awesome. When I got the coma, COVID-19, I didn't know I had it. I never had any signs, no sickness, no nothing. And I thank God my wife never got it. But they took me. One evening I wasn't feeling too good. Kathy took me in the emergency room and they put me in the hospital down at Jameson which is a nice hospital now. And they said my enzymes were out of cadillac. And they were going to do a heart catheter to see if something was wrong with my heart. Well, I heard this doctor saying, I don't like to look at this chart. I don't like to look at this chart. I thought he was talking about somebody else. Here I am over in the corner, all by myself, with a mask on. and. Uh, he said, Mr. Palm, did you ever get checked for a coma? And I said, yeah, they just done it upstairs. I passed your thermometer test, which I passed even at work, I passed it. But during that period of time, they called a, a lab technician to come down, done a swab up to my nose, down to my throat by here. They said, well, we'll know in about a half hour if you have it or not. Well, the nurse come back and she closes my curtain and he says, everybody out of this room. And I said, well, apparently somebody didn't make it from the operating room. And they were bringing them through. He said, I want everybody out of here now. We're closing this down. And then my nurse come over and she slid the curtain she, with a little tear in her eye. And I said, what's wrong? She says, you got the COVID-19 bad. 
I said, what? Yeah, she said, bad. Next thing I know, I'm going down the hole. I don't remember anything after that. But they put me in a room just by myself with the ventilator going out the side wall or the window or where it was there. And they told my wife that what happened was I quit breathing. And then my heart quit because this COVID attacked my brain. It shut the, uh, the nerve system that tells you to breathe. It shut me down. And I was nine days on this machine. You talking about how Satan works? <coughs> hmm. He played tricks with my mind while I was under these drugs. It came to the point where, <laughs> you're gonna have to laugh at some of this, because it's crazy. But I could hear everybody talking. Now, when a person's in a coma, don't forget they can hear you. So you gotta be careful what you say. But anyhow, as I was laying in this hospital bed, while I was in this coma, my hospital bed decides to move. Now this hospital bed took me through cornfields, golf courses, anywhere it wanted to take me, it took me. I'm just like, wait a minute. So I went back, it came back to my room and I said to one of the nurses, I said, my bed's moving. She laughed at me and she says, Mr. Palm, your bed can't move. Well, my friends, I thought it was my friends, became my enemy. And there's times when I seen people coming up out of the grave at me. I said, this is enough, Lord. I want to go home. But do the prayers of everyone who was praying for me from this church, the other churches, and so forth. I said, well, I'm a child of God. I'm not afraid. Amen. And Amen. that came back to me. I start. My bed started to move around again and this and that. And I said, Lord, whatever you have for me, I'm willing to do. I'm willing to go home or if I have to stay. But anyhow, he told Kathy one day as she was praying for me, she said, I don't want to be left alone. But God says, you bake his favorite cookie. What is my favorite cookie? Oatmeal, cook oatmeal cookies with raisins in them. What was it, three days later he made them. I came home. I was nine days on the ventilator. The rest of the time I spent in a hospital room by myself. Now I learned to feed myself. I learned to get up and walk around, which gave them courage that I was recuperating real, to be on my own. Yes, there is a lot of side effects. I have no strength again, like I used to have when I was before I had this COVID-19. There's days I get discouraged. I get mad because I can't do the things I used to do. But God was so good to me, I kept hanging in there. I kept trusting him. And the enemy says, you're not going to make it. And one person told Kathy, well, he's only going to be here for a season. I, you know. Only God knows where I'm going to go and what's going to happen. But in the meantime, I am proud to say I am a child of God. Amen. I'm his child. I'm under the blessings through his son, Jesus Christ, because I learned through Jesus. I have my God's blessing. I have my God's love that I have never had before. And I have my personal savior who saved me from, from the grave because I'm going to have eternal life with a better body than what I have right now. Don't ever play around saying, well, just because this ain't working, it's God's No, it ain't God. It's Satan trying to tell you you're not worth it. Every day he tries, tells me, you know, even at work, I see things at work. And I give my testimony at work. I say, hey, look, you don't play games. And I told one of the girls, I says, well, I ain't getting a shot because of I said, hey, you don't want it because this COVID-19 can knock the heck out of you. 
Believe me, it does. So if you haven't had the shots, get it. Because my neighbor, she knows the difference in me. I don't have the strength like I used to. Because the grace of God was with me. I, yes, I wanted to give up. I wanted to go home. I wanted to go to my heavenly home. But the prayers and God, I knew I was a child of God, kept me from going to the grave. He saved me from the grave quite a few times. It's all because of his grace. He's got something for me to do later on here in the future. I don't know what it is. But when he's opened the doors up, I'm going to go right through those doors. Kathy says, we're going to go to heaven together in the rapture. Well, she knows more than I do sometimes. But she can't go around oink, 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 because you don't have a big belt. But I says, hey, hon, quit, crying, quit trying to copy after me. Because I got a pacemaker, now she's got a pacemaker. I don't know who's, who's racing out racing the other. But, you know, God has blessed me with a wonderful woman who prays for me every day of her life. And I do the same. I am learned to pray in the, in, the, in the Holy Spirit. Prayer in the Holy Spirit. The prayer language. That's something awesome because when you talk to God in you're talking to Heavenly Father where Satan can't interfere. But I was told by a, a gentleman who was teaching me to be a minister. His name was Dr. Reverend Newby out of Farrell. He was a black person. He says, when you pray to God in, the, in your English, there's angels with she, she, uh, shields that will bounce the prayers back and forth to get to heaven because Satan is trying to interfere. But when you speak in the, the heavenly tongue, he can't interfere because that goes directly to the heavenly Father. When he says he's coming back soon, it is coming close. Because he told me I'm coming soon. So if you think that you don't need this shot, I advise get it. I got it. I got both of my shots. Even if I did have it, they said I should not be able to get it again. I was not. God said, "Don't take. Do as you know what your wife says to do." I said, "Okay, I got it." Yeah, I had a little side effect the first time, but the second time it didn't bother me at all. If you see me walking a little like I'm drunk sometimes, it's because I have no balance because of the COVID. I don't have the strength like I said I used to have. I thought I could handle a bucket, a five-gallon bucket of paint like I used to. Well, I learned today I didn't, wasn't able to do it, but I, I made my move. I trust God for the strength. I have done work around the house that normally I could do real fast. It takes me a little longer to do it. Because the enemies kept saying, oh, you're not going to make it. Yes, I'm going to make it. Every day I'm being healed, every day. I'm walking in God's presence and His holiness. Don't play games with God. Because it ain't worth it. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Because you are God's child. But the best thing of it all, He gave me a choice either to serve him or not to serve him. Back 24 years ago, I chose to serve him. But I didn't know what it was going to involve, but I don't care what it involves. As long as my life is for Jesus Christ, that's all I care. I don't care if I'm financially broke. I don't care if I have nothing, but I have my Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody can take that away from me but myself. Because he kept me from the grave many times. Experiment with the grave, it's, it's strange. Like I said, my hospital bed took me in different places. One day it took me in this huge McDonald's place. 
That's who I worked for, McDonald's and, and Newcastle. And my bed got caught between decaffeinated coffee and regular coffee. And my bed wouldn't move. Couldn't move because somebody put something behind it. Finally, it got loose. Went back to the nurse's stay, uh, my room again, or wherever I was at at that time. And uh, I told the nurse, I says, hey, my bed's still moving. She's standing there shaking it. See, it don't move. It don't move. As soon as she let go and turned her back, the boy we went again, the bed and I. <laughs> I mean, we went traveling. But whatever that bed took me through, God was showing me something. You're traveling. You're traveling. What he meant by that, I don't know. But if I'm going to be traveling, if I'm going to be traveling. He's going to provide the ways. And not only that, it kept my mind on God. Not death, but God. And I tell you what, I said uh, that uh, don't ever talk when a person's in a coma if you don't want them to hear. Because I had some beautiful nurses. They would walk into the room. Now this is down Jamison Hospital, which had a bad reputation at that time. But since UPMC took over, they would come in and tell me, well, Mr. Palmer, we're going to be putting a, a pill down your tube, and we're going to add water. Of course, I could not respond, but they told me what they were going to do. Or we're going to lay you on this side for a while, and then we're going to turn you over and clean you out. Uh, they played a radio station. All I heard was people dying from this disease. And I getting sick and tired of it. I couldn't. I couldn't tell them to shut it off, and I was trying to write it down, and I couldn't write down. Finally, they put some music on, which was a little different, but God was there all the time with me. My Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit kept me alive, kept me going, kept my thoughts going, you know, because I wanted to give up. I wanted to go on home. I lost a best friend. Jane Bar uh, Barbrook, he died from it. I don't know if he gave up or because of the complications he had, but when that thing tax your mind, it makes your body weak, it's nothing to play around with. I was one of the lucky ones that came off the machine alive because of the grace of God. Amen. Because otherwise I would have been in the grave today. Or I'd be in heaven today, not in the grave. I'd be up in heaven. Amen. And my wife would have been a widow. But when she told me that God spoke to her to bake my favorite cookies, eh, that was news to me. But she listened. That woman prayed every day. And my little dog I have laid up in the, the couch in our living room, looking out the window for me to come home. God brought me home. God brought me back to tell you folks, don't play games. Give your life to Christ because our time's coming soon. Amen. I seen what heaven's like. I seen the glory of God in many ways. But I never expected my hospital bed. <laughs> that was an experience I never had. My hospital bed is like a car, it goes on its own. But when I wanted to give up, I say I'm a child of God. I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. And then I sort of lift, lifted me up. When I laid in those rooms by myself and I made my mind up, I was going to feed myself. I was going to go to the bathroom by myself. And eventually I did it. And nurses were all surprised how fast I recovered. It's because Christ. I gave my Christ my life 24 years ago. And by the way, our anniversary is coming up in July for 25, 24 years. Nice. And in August, I, I will be 25 years walking with Jesus. Amen. I mean, he spared me from car accidents. He spared me from surgeries, uh, the COBA. I don't know what else God's going to 
brain before me. But I know when somebody says they're depressed, I know what they're talking about. They want to commit suicide. I've been there. Because you th you're a failure. That's what Satan's telling you, a failure. That's what he told me 25, 24 years ago that I was a failure. I was going to die. You know, that's what Satan said. So I took all this stuff to kill myself. Didn't work. I went through surgery. God brought me through the surgery. The only thing he left me with oink, oink, in my body. Now they go moo moo because they done away with the pig bells. But you know, I can joke around about it, but I can also be serious because Christ is the one we need to serve. Amen. We need to walk with Jesus Christ every day of our life because we do not know what Satan's going to throw at us next time. I don't know from day to day. Just like I told Steve, I said, well, I'm going to be preaching for two hours. He said, that's okay. But I told him, I said, when I was trying to come in the door, Satan was trying to push me on the floor because my toe caught the, the edge of the door and I was whoop, whoop, right in it. But it does leave a lot of side effects. I've talked to people, it's, it'd be, what, about a year now since, yeah, July of this coming year. It's been a year since I had the COVID. But I still have the side effects. I still walk around, I'm still weak. But by the grace of God, I'm getting my strength. Someday I'm going to be able to walk a straight line. I'm going to be able to lift 25, 30 pounds of weight again. Someday. But what Christ gave me was awesome. He gave me a beautiful wife who prayed for me. He gave me the opportunity to share things with other people. He gave me the opportunity to help my neighbors out when they need help, like mowing their yards, doing this and doing that. I don't care who it is. If I'm able to do it, I'll do it for them. As long as God gives me the strength. And just like our nation, the way it's going, you're talking about socialism, it's going to lead into Democrat. They're, they're going to try to rule. United States. Nobody's going to take it. No, I don't care what government it is, Republican or Democrats or Antichrist or anything. God had got a purpose for the United States yet, regardless how it looks. There's going to be a great revival. Yes. I want to be part of that revival. Amen. Yes. And all oh, yeah. Learn to stand up for Jesus. If Satan tells you you're a failure, tell him, okay, I'm a failure, but I'm still a child of God. You know? Even if you go around oink, 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 all the time, you're still a child of God. But, you know, I heard people saying, well, you know, they can hear you when you're unconscious. Well, I'll believe it now because God showed me that you still can hear when you're under, under Satan. Now, that's what I said. When my hospital bed was moving around and great people coming up out of the grave at you, or you're in some kind of country you don't know, they're coming at you with a, to kill you. He even turned, that's how Satan worked. He even took my wife and made me think that she got remarried and she was living with someone else now. And I'm sitting there, hmm, that's news to me. But you know, when I got home, I told her about it and she laughed a little bit. But you know, that's how the enemy will play with your mind when you're not thinking of the things to do. With this drug, even Kathy told him to take me off one drug. Oh, well, we have to give him this drug to make him recover. She said, take him off of it. I recover faster than what they thought I was going to because my father took care of it. I have to give him all the glory. Yes. The healing. Mmm, that's awesome. Especially when they took the stitches out before they were even supposed to come out. The oil. And I'm up walking around after surgery, which normally you don't do after heart surgery. I'm up walking around. So that's how God works. The enemy did not get his way. When I was in the grave, I seen the dirt and this and that, and I said, why am I in the grave? But when God came down, personally, and showed me from the waist up his glory. And that day, that movie, i never seen this movie before, but we was watching it on TV, and they 
brought this young girl up, and she was drawing a picture of Christ. As soon as she, they turned the picture around, I said, that's Jesus. All my hair stood up on my arms and stuff. I said, Kathy, that's what Jesus really looked like. That's himself. I mean, he's young, 29, hair down to his shoulder. Uh, I mean, his, he was in his glory. I mean, glory. He, he was even brighter than his shirt I have on. That was awesome. I thought I was going to go up, but he, I didn't go up. So, and when I go in for surgery anymore, my Lord, I'm in your hands, whatever. And when Kathy told me that the nurse thought I was swearing at her because I don't know what was going on. But she said, no, he's talking to his heavenly father. And there she is pushing the buttons to give me uh, morphine to, uh, to kill the pain. I had no pain. I told her I didn't want it. Oh, you got to have it. I said, no, I don't. Because God took the pain away. Yes. Yeah, I get, I get a lot of... I, I get a lot of pain every once in a while, but I stop praising God and it goes away. So if anybody here tonight want to give their life to Christ, that's the time to do it before it's too late. Anybody wants a healing, we can pray for that too. Because I'm living my life for my Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, I am my Heavenly Father's grace. I am my Heavenly Father's love. And I can't ask for anything any better. I mean, my wife can't give me the love that Jesus has given me. But she comes close. And I tell you, I got a beautiful woman who is a good Christian woman. But she learned that I was not going to change my life to become a Catholic or anything else. I was willing to, but still I had my Lord Jesus Christ. And she's seen that, and she changed, gave her life back you know, to Christ, to a, what we call Christ living, not Protestants or I don't care what you call it. We're Christians. We're, we're a child of God. We are a child of God. And I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Lord Steve, I gave you a few hours later.